Welcome back to Cabmaster Software. Today we're going to go through all the new features coming in version 10.1, which should be out very shortly. Um, first one is, which has been there for a while actually, is this very top right button here. There's a little down arrow. You click on that. What's new? This actually tells you what's actually new in the current library. So this will be 10.1 before we release it. Um, so you can always see what's new in the current version, whatever you're running. So it goes through all the new features. Um, in the version that you're currently looking at. So just be aware to, to look at that. So the first thing we really want to look at today is the template being locked down. So up until now, you could click on any of these parts of the template and move them around. If you had a cabinet that overlapped your template, you couldn't select it properly because it would get stuck. Now, quite happily, uh, the template's completely locked down. It still changes, so if I go into drawing properties, um, add in a, a client or something like that, add in any client details, it still updates as it always did, but it's locked down. If you want to edit it, you can right click on the screen, go to options, uh, view properties, and there's an option here that says template, allow edit of template items. You click that on, now it's all live again, you can see they're all highlightable and I can start clicking on things and moving them around. Um, so you can do things like that as well. So that's a nice way to actually lock the template down so it doesn't interfere with your current drawing. So now I can sort of lock down again. Uh, so that's a very nice feature from 10.1. Uh, so another new thing we've added in version 10.1 is to do with walls. So I'm just going to place some walls on the drawing. Um, if you double click on the wall, you've now got this option um, here. You can see which side of the wall you're looking at. Um, so this is wall one, obviously the first one you place, so the left-hand one. Um, you can now specify sloped. So you can say at the start of wall one, I want to have this sloped. And I'm going to start here at, and just as an extreme example, I'm going to start at 1200 high. You can see now it's the slope down from 1200 to wall two. So wall two is at 2400. And if you want to slope that one down, um, what you can say from there is, I want to, that one's going to be sloped, but I'm going to slope the other way. So I want to go to the end of the wall, which is now going to be at, let's say, 1800. So if we go and view that now in 3D, you can see that that goes from 1200 on the first side up to 24, and the, one, the back one, 2400 down to 2100. So you can slope, slope walls. I'm just going to create a new wall from scratch, put it straight through here. Um, if I put in a lot of cabinets, um, so I'm just going to throw in a whole range of cabinets in here. Uh, don't particularly care what they are. I'm just throwing cupboards down for the sake of it. So one of the new features we've added in is if you want to go renumber a cupboard now. So you see these, these cabinets here, um, it counts everything on the template first. So if you actually go to a range, you can renumber all items. Um, and it'll just start them all back at one again. So that's a nice easy, that's been there for a little while. So that starts them all at one. But if you've got overhead cabinets, as an example, let's, let's throw some, uh, some wall cupboards in there. So I'm just going to grab a standard wall cabinet, put in some wall cupboards. So you may, may not want to renumber everything again. What we can now do is go renumber tool, this new one in the middle here, and it says, what, where do you want to start? You're going to start renumbering at number one, or let's say we want to start from number eight. So I'm just going to go eight, nine, 10, 11. So you can renumber from a specific number from now on as well. So you don't have to restart all the other cupboards again. So renumbering from a specific number is, a, is another new feature, which is a very nice uh, option to get, have in there. Another new feature we've added to Cabmaster 10.1 is the ability to change a font size on the cabinet. So what I'm going to do very quickly is just go change this um, instead of being an ID to user to find. So it makes it a little bit bigger. Um, if we go grab a yeah, tall two door or something like that, throw that over here. You can see it's on a slot looks like a slightly different font now. Um, what you can now do is you can go to File, Prepare resize label. Now you can check here, you can actually increase everything by a given percentage. Um, so it means if one font is larger than the other, they'll still remain larger. They'll just both scale up to it on a given rate. 
Um, pick a new font means everything will go to the same font and the same size, same font type. Um, I can say I want to make it bold, I want to make them all um, 8, it's going to make it even worse. I actually might take it down to say 4 on this example and see if it all fits in nicely. And just hit OK. And you can also choose down here, include all the cabinets, include other t items such as dimensions and labels, uh, and include template items. So generally you wouldn't change them if you just change the font of cabinets. So just have include cabinet items. So you can see they've now all changed down to a much smaller font size. So that may work for you. The, the other option is if you say go back to options, change user defined back to ID. So it's just the numbers. You might find these numbers are now far too small. So you may want to increase them back the other direction. So you can do that as well, increase them up to another size. Um, so there's quite a few things you can do with um, with changing the font size as well, just to make your layout a little bit cleaner and tidier. Another new feature we've added to Cabmaster 10.1 is much cleaner dimensions. So if you look at dimensions, uh, you've got dim set and you've got dimensioning uh, dimensions. If you right click on any of these buttons, it actually comes up and tells you what's available, uh, what layouts are available with that button. So dim set v10 point uh, v10, and dimensions again. Dimensions is a whole lot of different things for dimensions, but dimensions v10. So if you click on um, dim set, dim set v10, if you right click on the wall and go auto dimension, that actually uses the dim set. That's a dimension set. So the dimensions you can see now are much cleaner and tidier. Um, fonts are a little bit smaller, lays out very nicely. So you can quite happily do that as well. So uh, right click, auto dimension. Now, if you've got a, what the new feature in here is, so that's been there for a while, but they are cleaner. So that's one um, nice, easy, easy way to do it. One of the new things we've also got in here is the ability to move the text. So if you sit here and say, oh, I can't see that one there too well. So just a little bit too close to that side or it's overlapped by the, uh, the lines in here. If you hold down the control button and click on the dimension text, it lets you move it around. So you can actually put the text where you want. Uh, so it makes it a little bit easier to say, okay, that one there at 20, hold down control, just move it to the side. It's a little bit neater now. So you can do things like that to tidy up your text. That so looks much cleaner instead of getting overlapped slightly by the what the, those header ends there. Same as these ones here. Again, just, you can grab these, move them both, um, just move them out like that. So being, having the ability to actually move dimension text or manually is a really nice feature as well. I'll grab a panel, floor end panel to floor. Let's go to the bench top and overhang it on the right by 20 mil. So this is how you'd normally end, um, and let's put one on either end, let's do that. So I'm going to overhang on the left by 20 mil. So let's say this was just an island bar or something, an island bench. Now one issue we've had for a while is how do you dimension the bench top? We've had issues with this and you try and dimension and it only dimensions to the cabinets or the panels and you can't, it doesn't snap to the bench top and you go, well there's, there's a cabinet sizes, it's not quite what I want because it's not, you can see the markers there aren't going to the bench top. Okay, if you go now to view these handles, this is snap the handle. Uh, this is saying which part do I want to snap to. Now what we've done is we've tidied this up completely. Now it actually makes a lot of sense. It's very easy to do. Say, so, okay, these are the parts that are available in my cabinets. I want to snap to my bench top. So bench top, and now grab my dimension. Text is going to go there. Now look at this. I can go straight to my bench top there, straight to my bench top there. There's my bench top dimension. Really easy. Start a new dimension over here from there to the end of that. Beautiful. So it's really quick and easy to do bench top dimensions. So dimensioning um, different parts is so much easier now because you can just come up to here and say I want to dimension to um, just my end or just my kickers and things like that as well. Or I just want to dimension a door. So okay, grab a dimension. I want to dimension just from, from that door to the end of that door. Um, I can also split them up in a center as well, two mil gap. So it's really easy to, to start, start now dimensioning different items on there. Uh, if you go back to um, none, then it will only go back to the raw cabinet dimensions again. So I go back to here, I can now click on just, just the cabinets and nothing else. So it's really quick and easy to start dimensioning different items by using these different handles. Um, and to make it a little bit easier, if you like, you can actually add that down to this quick access toolbar down here so it's always visible as well. So that's a really nice feature being able to um, uh, snap to different names, uh, to the friendly, what we call the friendly names of the handles. 
Another new feature we've implemented in CADMaster 10.1 is the ability to make even by, via doors. So if I add in a, some dimensions here, I've just thrown in some standard cabinets, a couple of two-door cupboards. Um, actually, I'm going to throw in a single door cabinet into there. Um, so I've got a single door, two doors, two do drawers, three drawers, a couple of twos, and you see they're different dimensions. Um, so if I now highlight all of those, and it's going to make even, it now looks at the door sizes, and it'll make all the doors even sizes. So you can see these cabinets, what it's done with all the cabinetry, um, so all the doors now have even sized doors on them. Um, so it makes it easier to actually get the door, your doors, as you normally order your doors, you want them to be as even as possible, so uh, that make even now works on doors. Another new feature we've added into Cabmaster version 10.1 is in actually in all the cupboards now. Uh, you can add in new hinges, uh, but very specifically in the universal cabinet. I'm just going to go and turn some things off on here. Um, turn the back rails off just to get rid of those. But if you go into doors, um, divisional doors, and in cell doors as well, um, if I edit the door, you can now specify where do you want the hinge to be, so I can hinge it on the top, um, so I can have a lift door, I can also hinge on the bottom and have a pull down door, which we've been asked for for a lot, so yeah, um, lift lift hinge and uh, drop down hinges um, are now available in all the cabinetry as well, so you can set up, they, they, they will need to be set up in your tables to be available for use, um, if you've got a question on how to do that, please speak to the support staff and uh, they can help you out with those things as well, so you can see it's now a lift uh, drop down door. Another new feature we've added into Cabmaster 10.1 is the ability to have um, pipe chasers in the universal cabinet now. So you have pipe chasing, you can add that, same as we can in the other cupboards. Um, you can make it whatever size you like and it'll cut around everything as well. And this one actually cuts in multiple backs, which is a nice feature. Um, you can cut it from the sides and all that sort of stuff, change it wherever you want. Um, but the, uh, yeah, this cupboard here, oh, if you have two backs in there, will actually cut two backs. So I turn backs on, now I've got two backs in there as well, so it actually does it properly with multiple backs. So that's come out really well, that one. Um, the other thing you can add into the universal cupboard is you can now add in shadow rails. So you can actually allow for shadow rails if you have drawers and all those sorts of things. So I've now got yeah, so shadow rails inside universal cupboards as well. So that's been requested for a while, they're now there as well, and you can also see them in uh, 3D, which is another nice feature, so you can see how it actually cuts around. Oop. I've got a little notch at the bottom for cleaning up, um, colour fascia on it, so we can do those sorts of things as well, so we've got yeah, shadow rails and pipe chasers in the universal cupboard. Another new feature we've added into Cabmaster version 10.1 is the ability to see the custom machining in 3D. So I'm just going to standard base cabinet. Um, I'm going to go to custom uh, and right. I'm going to choose. Uh, there's a whole lot of samples in here and things we can actually can be used. But one called four vents. Just going to turn that on. So you can see it comes up with its four vents in the side. Uh, if I now go to 3D, you'll see the four vents in there quite happily. So you can see through into the cupboard. Um, so yeah, any extra machining you can now see in 3D, which makes it a whole lot neater and tidier as well and easy to see.